John chapter 4, and we'll read uh, verse number 4. John chapter 4, and verse number 4. I can't, uh, can't ever read this verse, but I don't think about uh, Brother Nalen McCreelis coming by our house. Uh, let's see, that's been uh, 43 years ago. Justin, are you even thinking about being 43 yet? Nah, you ain't even thinking about it yet. 43 years ago. And uh, that night uh, led me to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And uh, so uh, the Lord must, ne must have needed to come through grassy that night. And uh, Brother Nalen uh, McCreelis was... Uh, part of the, him coming. So John 4 in verse 4 says, and he must needs go through Samaria. We're going to talk tonight about there being uh, at least three other routes. One guy talks about only two. One guy talks about there being three ways he could have went. Uh, more than likely, this was not the route that he usually took because uh, of the territory he had to go through. But we're going we're gonna to talk about that just a little bit. So he must needs go through Samaria. One, one guy's got a website traveling through Jerusalem. And uh, just to give you some, for instance, he says uh, there were two main routes. J. Vernon McGee gives a third one. He calls one of them the Samaritan Road, one of them the Jordan Way. And uh, coming from uh, Nazareth, which is in Galilee to Jerusalem, but he, he's leaving Jerusalem going into Galilee. But either way, uh, he says the crow flies distance about 64 miles. So 64 miles, that would be leaving my house and walking beyond Huntsville, however how long that is. It's about 50 miles to Huntsville. Uh, but uh, by road, it was about 70 miles. Uh, and he, he throws this out. A typical traveler can walk 15 to 20 miles in a day. So that means if you are uh, walking from Nazareth to Jerusalem, it's going to take you about four days. Adding the grass's pace, you'd be able to make it in three. But uh, if you like Marty Mosley, it could take you as much as five. Uh, the Samaritan Road, most of it was in the hills. Uh, altitude gets up to about 2,000 feet above sea level. And uh, it was a mean way to go, especially for a Jew, because Samaritans and Jews just didn't get along very well. Uh, he, he puts it this way. Occasionally, the Samaritans harassed Jews uh, coming to the feast, and sometimes they, they killed those coming to the feast. There was another route by the Jordan Way, and it was probably 85 to 90 miles, but it was down in the valley, and uh, uh, it might take you uh, aggressive pace, four days, or Marty Mosley pace, walking slow, six days. Uh, so which one did Jesus take normally? Uh, he probably, with his disciples in, in tow, he probably did not go through Samaria that often. But this day, he had an appointment uh, with this lady. And uh, I want to talk to you about that word there, must. Because there was uh, several times in the life of Christ that he says that he used the word must. Matter of fact, Everywhere I found the word must that I looked, I did not do an exhaustive list, but everywhere I looked for the looked at the word must, it was translated from the same word, and believe it or not, Melanie, I can pronounce it. It's uh, spelled D-E-I, but you pronounce it day. Now that, uh, that there, it just, it just must have been wonderful. Uh, he must, needs, go, through Samaria. Uh, the word that literally means it's necessary. It's a must. It's, uh, it's a have to. 
inevitably he had to go through Samaria. Uh, and there's some things that you and I must do. If you look back, mine's just a one page flip over. In John chapter 3, I want you to look down to verse 7. John chapter 3 and verse 7. As he's talking to Nicodemus, of course, he's already told him that uh, a man must be uh, a man, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And a lot of times I, I throw the word must in that verse, but the word must is in there in verse 7. He says, Marvel not that I said unto you, ye must be born again. Verse 7, you must be born again. In other words, it's of a necessity that you be born again. It is necessary to be born again. We've got to be born again. And uh, basically what, it, what he's telling him there is, you've got to be born from on high. Now, a lot of times we want to uh, bring God down to our level. No, that, that, ain't, that ain't the way it goes. I remember, uh, now some of you remember, I was watching a video just yesterday, and they was driving by Opry Mills in Nashville, Tennessee, down the Briley Parkway, and he was telling his kids, kids, when I was growing up, Opryland used to be right there. And they tore it down and made a mall out of it. And uh, I never, I didn't hear the kids from the back seat say a word. It was probably like, yeah, right, there used to be an amusement park there. And kids, there's the Grand Ole Opry. It used to be downtown Nashville, but there's the Grand Ole Opry. And did they know what the Grand Ole Opry is? I have no earthly idea. They, they uh, early teens to around 11 years, 11 to early teens, somewhere there's three kids in the family. And, uh, but here's something that I saw at Opry Land. And uh, they made me believe that water could run uphill. Because I remember being in that room, and there goes the water uphill. But I think the room was slanted, and it was probably really going downhill. It just made it look that way. But they kept talking about it. The water goes uphill. No, water don't go uphill. But neither when we talking about our relationship with God, we go up to him not him coming down to us. You must be born again. You must be born from on high. Look down to verse 14 of John chapter 3. John chapter 3 and verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. If you remember, Moses lifted up that serpent, and so many as looked on, looked up, to that brazen serpent that he put on the pole, uh, it was take, everything was taken care of. But think about those that said, ah, "I'm not, no, nah, I'm not going to look up there." Well, guess what? They didn't get healed. But every one of them that looked to that brazen serpent that Moses lifted up, that God instructed him to lift up, they were healed on that day. And he says, "As Moses lifted up that serpent." Even so must the Son of Man, it is of a necessity, it's necessary, it has to be that he be lifted up. A couple other places that I, I found the word must in, if you turn over to John chapter 10, in verse number 16. Again, this ain't an exhaustive list, y'all probably thinking about some that I didn't uh, I didn't think of, didn't even think about. John chapter 10 and verse number 16. This is when he was talking about being the, the good shepherd. And uh, he's already we already talked about him telling Nicodemus a man must be born again. But verse 16, he talks about uh, him having sheep in the house of Israel. But there's another group of sheep which you and I ought to be thankful for that there's just not of the house of Israel, not just a Jew that will say, but those other sheep, that, that, that throws me and you in there. Verse 16 says, And other sheep I have, 
which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. I, uh, it has to be. It, uh, I have to. It, it is a must that I bring them, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold, and there's one shepherd. Now, who's the shepherd? Jesus is the great shepherd. So there's a lot of must there. There is, there are a lot of must there, and there's one more that I want to look at tonight. And that's John 20 and verse 9. This is a another thing that I'm thankful for. This is uh, as they were first discovering that Jesus' body was not in the tomb. And uh, verse 9, as John writes it under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Again, uh, don't, let's talk about what that word means. It's necessary that he rise from, from the dead. It's a must. It's a have to. It's inevitable. It is a part of God's plan that he rose from the dead. Matter of fact, the Bible says that's how God showed his great power in raising him from the dead. But that word, back over in John 4, 4, that's a word that has always drew my attention. That he must needs go through Samaria. You look. You look at a map. There's many different ways. J. Vernon McGee throws a third. I talked about two ways. Uh, he talks about a third way. But uh, even with uh, the writings of Josephus from from the early parts of uh, the early parts of the the first century, wrote that it took about three days to travel from Jerusalem to Galilee along the route that he took through Samaria. It was going to be at least a three-day journey. And a three-day journey of, uh, well, ask you this. Where, where were his disciples? Was his disciples with him or was he just a loner? Well, if you look back in verse 1 of John chapter 4, I don't see him with you. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left Judea and departed into Galilee. And he must needs go through Samaria. And then verse 5, Then cometh he to the city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. So uh, I don't see him that his disciples are even with him. Why? Because they didn't have anything to do with Samaritans. Samaritans didn't have anything to do with him. But Jesus had an appointment. Jesus had an appointment there. He must needs go. Sometimes in life, there are appointments that you and I have. And it may not be something we got on the calendar. The other night, Jenna said, uh, Daddy, uh, how many jobs do you have? That's so why I can't start. I said, well, does retirement count? She said, yeah, let's count that one. So, retirement. Pastor of Springfield First Baptist Church. Teach math at uh, Lawrence County High School, Lawrenceburg, Tennessee. I teach online classes at University of Phoenix. And this week, I've added another one. This other college uh, hired me to look at their curriculum to give it the thumbs up or thumbs down. And uh, so I'll be submitting that tonight, ending job number five tonight. But there's some things. Do I have to do all that? No. But a long life journey when we were at uh, Anderson First Baptist as a uh, youth minister, the kids, all the kids would want to go out and do something. Well, I've got to teach a class. 
Uh, we'll be able to go here in a little bit. Like I, I got to do this class. I must do this, this class work. Got to do it today. Can't. There are some things we must do. There's some things that we got to do. Jesus knew about this appointment with this lady. And wherever he met you out, whether it was a church service, whether it was your home, wherever it was, I hope that you are as thankful as I am that he came by that way that day. This lady went back testifying, come see a man. Come see a man that's told me everything I've ever done. How could he do that? Because he knows everything there is about us. Another group of writers says about this word must, they say this. The word must, and they throw another letter in there, but I couldn't find that other letter anywhere but in their writings. E-D-E-I, so I don't know. Uh, they tell me day is how you pronounce D-E-I, but don't know how you do it when the E's throw it in there. It means a necessity, a compulsion, a destiny. Jesus was driven to go through Samaria for the sake of his mission. Samaria needed the gospel as much as other areas. Now, I don't, I'm not going to go very far down this road, but... Uh, you need to understand who the Samaritans were. And for lack of better words, words that I understand, words I think y'all can understand, half-breeds. They were half-Jewish, half-Gentile. They didn't have nothing to do with one another, but yet Jesus still went because it was a necessity that he go there and meet this woman. Maybe you've never ever been in this situation. Maybe this situation may come up in your life but I have uh, had somebody on my mind at times in my life and all of a sudden hadn't seen them in years and all of a sudden poof there they are right in front of me you say well that's a coincidence I don't I don't think so I think it was as to bar to borrow that word from that one group of people there it was a destiny that we meet together and converse Are we going to add Jesus into that conversation or are we just going to talk about old time? Hope, maybe those old times do hinge around Jesus. But he must needs go through Samaria. And you know what come out of that conversation he had with that lady? Part of what come out of that conversation that he had with that lady was this. God's a spirit. And they that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, for the next little bit, I'm going to talk a little bit about spirit. Spirit, that's who you are. That's your innermost being. It's a... Uh, to get down to the biblical meaning of it, it is a breath of air. Now, one thing that uh, I always think about when I think about spirit is the King James Version, as Paul was writing to Timothy, he told him to be an example. And he lists a lot, uh, several things for him to be an example in. And uh, one of those, the King James Version lists, is spirit. Other translations of the Bible don't have that in there. But here's what I always think about when I think about that. There was, there were two young ladies that I taught at Cloverdale that uh, I wasn't very high on their list. I'm just going to put it to you that way. And the uh, word got to me that they started serving breakfast at Cloverdale, so I'd get to work early, go in there and eat breakfast every morning. 65 cents, Terry. Where can you go eat breakfast for 65 cents? You could get your orange juice. You could get your sausage. You could get your biscuits. Sometimes, most of the time they had gravy to smother that with. 
65 cents. Miss Amy said, I can't feed you for that. So I would go, and word got to me that when I walked into that lunchroom for breakfast, those young ladies would say, there comes that monster again. And so I asked, what, what have I done? What did I do? And this is their response. Both of them, their best friends, both of, both of them apparently had the same nightmare that I would make them go home with me on Fridays, stay the whole weekend at the Mosley house in Grassy, Alabama, and the whole weekend they're going to have to work math problems. So, yeah, here comes that monster that was going to make us work math problems all weekend. That ain't who I want to be known as. When I walk in the room, what do I want to be known as? When you walk in the room, what do you want the conversation to change to? I'd like for it to change to Jesus. I'm still working on that. Spirit must work, must worship him in spirit and in truth. Not building anybody up individually, but building him up. This morning we talked about the Tower of Bible. What Bible, what were they doing? They were striving to build a tower up to heaven to make their self above God. But if you look down with me to John 4 and 24, I've got it highlighted. You might want to mark it. might not want to mark it. God is a spirit. And they that worship him, there's that word again, must. Of a necessity of a need, must worship him in spirit and in truth. Not with a pretense, not, but with everything that we've got. He laid it all on the line for us. We ought to likewise lay everything that we've got on the line for him. I'm thankful tonight that we have that word in John 4 and verse 4. He must needs go through Samaria. He could have went another way. But he had an appointment, a destiny to meet with this woman. I'm so thankful, again, I'm so thankful that he came through Grassy that night. That he used Brother Nayland McCreelis to come talk to, with me about the need to know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. We, he must needs go through Samaria. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, I, I thank you, Lord, uh, about the must that you lay out in your, in your, in your word. Lord, one of them is we must be born again. We uh, as a song we used to sing as a kid, we, we, it's so high we can't get over it. It's so low we can't get under it. It's so wide we can't get around it. We must go into the door, and that door is Jesus Christ. We must needs go through him. Thank you, Lord, for everything you do for us. Thank you for salvation. Lord, you have your way in each one of our lives tonight. And as we go through this week, on some must, Lord, that we may have coming up in our life. Lord, uh, help us to be thankful for you. Help us to acknowledge you and give you credit. For without you, we'd be, I'd be absolutely nothing. Lord, have your way in each one of our lives. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.